station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Yes, I'm ready for the event. Women's Day, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Susan Spencer from Women's Day Magazine. How do you hear me? Susan, I have you loud and clear. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. Hello, Dr. Whitson. Greetings from the Hearst Tower in New York City. I'm here with the staff of Women's Day, and we are absolutely thrilled to be spending this short amount of time with you. No, I'm thrilled to be talking with you guys, too. Fantastic. Um, the first thing we're going to do is um, do a kind of a group activity here where we're going to sh show you how to create a dessert from ingredients that you have on the international up on the International Space Station. Are you ready for this? I am ready. I think I have all the ingredients here. <laughs> Great. The first thing we're going to ask you to do is take out cookies. <laughs> and we're all doing this with you. Okay. All right, great. I hope you have your scissors because, you know, on, up here everything's packaged. So you have to, you know, previously cut up the, you know, cut the, the cookies out of the package. All right. The next thing, the next thing we're going to ask you to do is take some peanut butter and spread it on the cookie. Can you do that? <laughs> All right, here comes the peanut butter. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All right, then we're going to sandwich it together, right, like that. There you go. And finally, do you have a little chocolate sauce, Dr. Whitson? <laughs> You're going to squeeze. And I have some chocolate pudding here. <laughs> OK. We're going to dip, and you're going to squeeze. So here you go. All right. And here comes the chocolate. <laughs> All right. And <laughs> OK. And I don't know what time I don't know what time of day it is, but in my world, I eat cookies at 10, 10 o'clock in the morning. So let's go. <laughs> How's that taste? How's that taste? It's very tasty. It's funny because I'm not a huge peanut butter fan on Earth, but I love it up here. Well, thank you so much for indulging us on that one, and I hope that you'll share that recipe with your um, fellow uh, fellow astronauts on the space station. Um, so we're going to start with a question that's um, kind of flows a little bit from what we just did, and, and it really is basically just what is your favorite dessert, and are you going to eat it the moment you get off of the off of the space station? Well, actually, my favorite dessert. First, I'm going to answer my favorite dessert up here on space station. So our food folks do a great job of having a variety of different foods up here, but after a while, you have to start getting kind of creative in order to make something interesting. So my favorite dessert up here is what I call space apple pie. And uh, we, of course, don't have pie crust, but uh, we have tortillas. And so I use a tortilla and our uh, uh, spiced apples. So I put the spiced apples in it tortilla, warm up the apples in the tortilla, make them warm, and then I add raisins to that, and that's uh, space apple pie. How does that sound to you? That, that sounds pretty good. Do you, do you have a microwave? How do you heat it up? <laughs> just curious. We have, it's basically just a convection oven, uh, so it, by making contact, our food uh, can come up either as a uh, these MRE type things, uh, military rations in these foil pouches, and you just put them in the oven. Uh, and just by 
uh, convection, the heating will warm them up. Uh, we have a lot of rehydratable uh, foods. This is a re uh, sh dehydrated shrimp cocktail. And so uh, you just add hot water to that. And then I usually put it in the oven just to let it sit for a little while. Most of the rehydratable stuff tastes better if it sits in the oven for 10 minutes or so before you eat it. Right. Okay, I'm gonna But my favorite dessert on the ground, okay, my favorite dessert on the ground is is probably uh, something that my mom makes. It's uh, she makes homemade vanilla ice cream and we eat it with uh, her homemade uh, chocolate pound cake. It's lovely. Oh, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> All right, I'm going to move on to a, a much more a much more important question. So, um, you have from where you where you sit right now a very unique perspective on the world. So how have your feelings about life on Earth or the people back down on Earth evolved um, from this perspective, now that you have this perspective? Well, it is a very uh, unique perspective, being able to see the planet. Uh, we go around it once every 90 minutes, traveling at 17,500 miles an hour. The thing that is most striking to me is you get a sunrise and a sunset every 45 minutes. But as the sun rises, just before it rises and just before and just after it sets, you can very clearly see what they call the limb of the Earth, and it is uh, where the atmosphere is. And it's just incredibly beautiful, but it looks so fragile and so small compared to our whole planet. And obviously it makes you think, well, we really need to take care of our planet um, and take care of our atmosphere so that we can maintain that. Right, indeed. So do you ever get claustrophobic on the inter International Space Station? No, I don't get claustrophobic. Maybe that's part of the criteria for selecting us, I think. But the station is much bigger than you would give it credit for being. Uh, this module that I am in is one of 15 different modules we have here connected together. The truss structure on the external surface that holds the solar arrays is the length of a football field. And each solar array wing, we have four uh, well, eight wings, but each one of those is 239 feet long. So the structure is amazingly huge. And to think that we built this all from pieces that we put together traveling at 17,500 miles an hour really makes it an engineering achievement. So it's too big to get claustrophobic. Right, okay. So um, we have, um, as you can see in the background, have um, your, your colleague Jeanette Epps on the cover of our 80th anniversary issue, and she's going to be up on the ISS next year. So what advice do you have for, for Jeanette being a, a newbie in space? Well, enjoy every minute of it. I think, um, you know, I've, I've tried to share with them all the uh, less than pleasant secrets of uh, how to live and work in space. <laughs> but uh, the, the most important part, I think, uh, of being up here is really just being able to enjoy it. Everyone, especially on a first flight, comes up and thinks, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. And you really just need to take some time to appreciate what it is in this whole experience of being here. Fantastic. Um, and then this was a, a, a audience question. Um, which I actually love, about when you dream at night. So when you dream, are you in space or are you on Earth? It's kind of well, it's, it's funny. I'm not a person that remembers a lot of dreams. And I do know that right before my flight, uh, this last flight, I remembered having several dreams where I was flying, you know, floating like I do here up here. Um, but I haven't had very many dreams of being on Earth, but I had one the other night, and I was uh, planting in my garden. So <laughs> I, maybe you dream of the other. I'm not sure. <laughs> but you weren't weightless in your garden. <laughs> no? <laughs> well, I do like to grow things to eat, but uh, we did get the opportunity to grow some vegetables up here while I was on board, and we got to eat those. Um, we got to eat part of them. Part of them we saved for the science, and part of them uh, we got to eat. Did they taste different? <laughs> well, they tasted pretty special because uh, we hadn't had anything fresh. You know, everything we eat is pretty packaged, and so having something fresh is very special.
and the fresh apples when they get sent out, fresh oranges, they're all extremely, extremely tasty because it's fresh. Dr. Whitson, thank you so much for your time. We hope you enjoyed the dessert. I think everybody here did, but we really appreciate it. And when you come back to Earth, <laughs> when you come back to Earth, we'd love to host you here at the Hearst Tower and give you a real meal. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you. You take care. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the Women's Day portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from ABC This Week. Okay, I hear you. Station, this is David Curley, ABC This Week. How do you hear me? David, this is Peggy Whitson. I have you loud and clear. Well, it's a pleasure, Dr. Whitson, to talk to you again. It's been four months since we had a chance to chat, uh, you in the station and us down here on Earth. What has changed in your life in four months? What has been different? I've actually been doing some really interesting research uh, recent, in the recent months. Uh, we are doing a lot of cell cultures. So I've been culturing stem cells, uh, cardiac cells, and uh, cancerous lung cells so, and bone cells. So those have been kind of my favorite experiments that we've been doing on board the space station. So that's been very interesting to me. We've been following you and Scott Kelly and long duration flights here. NASA is considering another possible year in space with another astronaut. What have we learned so far about the human being in space for that long period of time? Well, I think we're learning a lot about how the fluids shift and redistribute. We're trying to better understand uh, what causes some of the eye changes that are occurring. Uh, some are permanent, some are, are reversible, but we're trying to better understand what the mechanisms of those are. And that's actually one of those investigations that I think will help take us further uh, on our exploration missions by better being able to understand that and mitigate those risks uh, to our future astronauts. We talked a lot about bone density the last time we spoke, uh, that we need to figure out a way for astronauts to maintain their bone density. Uh, what have you been doing? What do you think we've learned since the last time we spoke? Well, uh, Obviously, we've, we've learned a lot over the years that we've been up here. We have exercise regimes that allow us to maintain our bone density for the most part. However, um, those exercise apparatus are pretty elaborate. And when we go on a mission, an exploration mission to Mars, we may have to come up with something smaller. So I've been testing a new, smaller, miniature exercise device, plus one of the cell culture studies I was looking at uh, was doing looking at, at bone growth, and uh, that may help us understand the mechanisms of the change and therefore maybe turn it around or reverse it uh, so that we don't lose bone mineral density as fast as we normally would here in space. You know, we've talked about uh, where we go next after the station. Do we go to Mars? Do we go back to the moon? What do you think we should do next? Where should we go? Well, I am a proponent of us doing further exploration. I, I want to make sure that when we do exploration, we don't just go and plant a flag. I want us to actually have a base on the moon, have a base on Mars, maybe have a, another orbital station in a Lagrange point that can be a base as we travel further out uh, from our, sol you know, out into our solar system. So I think any exploration is good exploration. Um, I think we need to plan on expanding uh, our presence in our solar system and beyond. I've seen you inside the station. I've seen you working outside the station during a spacewalk. You've had three missions. This, of course, uh, the long duration one. It could be your last. What's been the highlight? What is the one thing that you have done so far in space that you will always remember? 
Well, it's really hard to beat a spacewalk. Uh, being in your own little spacecraft, your personal spacecraft that just is covering your body, uh, and being outside in that environment uh, is extremely special. And it's always going to be a highlight. And since I've had spacewalks on all of my missions, that is uh, a part of those missions. My first two missions, other highlights really included a lot of the assembly process. I helped install uh, some of that uh, football field link truss that's outside that holds our solar array panels. I uh, have helped install the uh, cooling and debt power and data transfer from the, the forward end of the station back to the truss area. And so those have been highlights. Those are things I remember. I did internal and external things for that. I think on this mission, the highlight has really been a lot of the science that we're doing. I think the science has escalated, and we are uh, really improving the quality and level of science that's getting done up here. And so I think that's been exciting. Is there, have you, have you had a down day? We haven't talked for four months. Has there been a day where you really missed Earth and you kind of wanted to come home? You know, I think psychologically it's best not to think about going home for the most part during the mission. Uh, and even when I wasn't sure whether I would be leaving in June uh, or, or in September, uh, before that time, I really hadn't envisioned myself going home, and I think that helped with that transition because there really wasn't any transition. I hadn't really put my eggs in that going home basket. Now that I'm close to the end of the mission, theoretically within a couple of weeks of the end of the mission, I do think you know people are sending me notes. What do you you know What do you want to do about this thing when after two days after landing or this thing four days after landing and. Uh, it, it makes you think about being at home, and I think I've missed home more in the last week or so just because I'm being forced to think about it more. Uh, we're probably going to air Sunday morning. The eclipse, the total solar eclipse for much of America is going to happen on Monday. You don't get to see the whole thing. You get a lot of sunsets and sunrises, but what will you see? What are you looking for during the eclipse? Actually, uh, because we're going around the planet once every 90 minutes, we'll pass over and have it in our view on three of those orbits. But it's not going to be really, you know, it's not like we're flying through between uh, the, we won't be in that umbra of the eclipse. Uh, it'll probably be about 1,500, 1,700 miles away. So it's going to be nearer the, uh, the horizon view for us. We are planning on having cameras set up and video cameras set up, and I know there's uh, NASA sending out their WB-57s, and they're going to try and track it. So I think it's it's you know really exciting that it you know it's happening over the U.S. and that so many people are going to get to see it. So we we're going to try and join in with everyone down there. Okay, you told me four months ago you weren't very articulate about what it's like to be in space, the big picture, the big thoughts. You've had four months to think about it. Give me the big thoughts. Man, putting me on the spot here. Uh, I guess my, my big thoughts are that, you know, we really need to continue exploration. I think it, uh, it benefits uh, all of us uh, on the planet. Uh, not only with things that, that get fed back to our Earth and our society, but the enhancement of the technology that's required for us to take the next steps is always going to benefit us. And I think just philosophically, uh, we're made to explore. Dr. Whitson, I'm being told to wrap it up. I had one more, but I'll ask you when you're back on the ground. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, what a wonderful mission. We look forward to seeing you back here on Earth. Okay, looking forward to seeing you, too. You take care. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you, Women's Day and ABC This Week. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.